Hi, my name is Jay. I'm here at the Alcart Model Railroad Club, and tonight we're going to do a small clinic on backdrop painting. So my materials are fairly simple. I just have a couple of paper plates as palettes, and then a variety of greens, a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow, and then when we get to the clouds, we'll do the white and the gray. And they're just craft paints from, uh, how about these at Dollar Tree, actually, some of them. So pretty inexpensive to get into it. And so what I like to do is and take a sponge, you need like a cellulose sponge, it's, it's got the open pores on it, and I just tear a piece of that off. And then uh, we're going to wet that, just in some water, and then we're going to wring it out until it's almost completely dry. And then we're just going to start with our darker colors. So we're going to go with the, just this green, and we're just going to do some rough shapes. You don't want it too high up, I mean you want it fairly low to the horizon. So we're just going to do some basic dabbing, and you can see it just kind of takes on uh, the basic shape of some trees, that sort of thing. So we just kind of make them random and, you know, happy little trees, as Bob Ross would say. <laughs> and you don't want to do it too heavy, so I always say like, um, for those of us old, old enough to remember back teen, when you would dab back teen on your on your scarred up knee, you wouldn't really mash it in there. Just a light, light dab, because you, what you want is you want that light to show through, so it's not just like one big blob. And like I said, we'll start with the darker colors. And one important thing to remember is that um, where your shadows and your highlights are, you want your sun to be. Pick a spot, it doesn't matter which side, but you don't want like there's two suns unless it's some sort of sci-fi layout, but you know, that's up to you. But you sort of pick a spot where you want your sun to come from. And now we're going to go with just a touch of black and actually a little bit of brown. And then we're going to go in here and toward the very bottom, we're going to paint what would be the shadows or the underside of the, uh, of the trees and brush, etc. And again, it's just a light dabbing motion. And the nice part is if you, if you use this, the sponge and it just gets a little dirty, then the colors are actually blending together better. Okay, so now I want to grab another piece of sponge. And we're going to go with some of the lighter colors now. We're going to wring that water out. And then I want to dab just a little bit lighter green. And we're going to put the sun basically over here. So all the highlights are going to be on this side facing toward the sun. That's a little heavier than so we get that off of there and it's no big deal because as long as it's wet you can still work it the way you want to work it so as you can see I'm just painting some highlights on the side that would be where the Sun would be shining off these leaves and it's all just random and like I said the main thing is you you want it to have that open where the different colors are showing through I'm just gonna dip in there and get a little bit more So as you can see, we're getting some highlights in some of the trees and even on the lower brush here where the sun would hit some of that lower brush. And what you're doing is you're just creating layers and different levels of light, shadows and light. And what I, I like to try to do is as I get toward the bottom then I go with an even lighter, uh, mix a little bit of yellow and a lighter green. So what, what I try to do anyway on my home layout is actually I just try to match the color that's almost going to be like the ground foam or whatever you have right up against the backdrop. So it just sort of blends right in. And I like to use a brighter a brighter green, I guess. It leans more toward yellow. Uh, that way it just sort of looks like natural sunlight in there. So as you can see, we're just building up. I mean, all we've done here is just dab it with a sponge so far. But you can see it's starting to take some shape and, uh, and have some highlights and shadows. Then I like to just grab a, uh, a thinner brush and I'll just mix some dark color, usually some brown, maybe just a little bit of green. And you just go in here and just randomly paint some lines to represent uh, trunks, branches, etc. Just here and there. Uh, occasionally I'll, I like to throw in maybe just a few empty ones, like a dead tree sticking up out. Get 
throw some in over here. And then depending upon where you model that kind of, I mean, around here we have a lot of deciduous trees, that sort of thing. So you don't really run into a lot of uh, pine trees. But if you want to paint a pine tree, that's a fairly simple process too. So I just take some nice dark green, like a pine tree would be. And actually, before I do that, let's go back to um, get some brown, some dark brown. And we're just going to paint, we're going to paint the trunk of the pine tree first. I'm going to paint it right here. And it just gets thinner toward the top, kind of like a, a toothpick basically. And we're going to take this brush with the green and we're just going to start with a short line crossways right there and then the one below it gets a little bit wider and then a little bit wider and then as you come down you'll just hit both sides and you want to just start curving them up. Curving them up and then you can go back in and, and uh, fill them in between to make sure that it looks good and full. And at the very top, just come straight up with the, you know, basically where you put your, your angel on the Christmas tree, that little structure up top there. And just throw a few of those in here and there, um, just for variety. Get a nice blend like we have uh, in the woods around here. And if you, uh, you can, you can paint the trunk over and then touch the green back up, however you want to do it. And then sometimes if you want to brighten your scene up just a little bit, and you don't want to overdo this unless actually you're modeling, uh, modeling autumn is take a little yellow and a little bit of orange and just mix them in ever so slightly uh, you know like a tree that's just uh, starting to turn color a little bit and this time of year is <laughs> that's happening a lot around here so maybe just throwing a little bit of uh, orange on top of that green while it's still wet so it doesn't look really like stick out like crazy and you don't like I said you don't want to overdo it but just a little bit here and there maybe add a little more yellow And again, your light source is over here. The sun's over here. So we want to try to follow with all that. And just throw in a nice splash of color. Soon you'll have to rake all those leaves. And you can bring some of that down on the bottom too. So essentially, and you can add different details. You know, you can go back in with your small brush and, and paint more of your branches and limbs in as you like here or there. Um, one thing that's kind of cool to do on some of this stuff is, uh, where's my, there it is. is to just take a little bit of white, and if you just draw right down, just pick up here and there, a little hit or miss, then you pretty much, you've just made a birch tree. So that's, that's a possibility too. Okay, now when it comes to clouds, uh, um, there's two ways to do it. Now I'll show you the first way to do it with just the sponge. And that's it. Again, it's a cellulose sponge. It's, it's very porous. It's open. So it's got, when you dab it on the canvas, the backdrop, it's going to have those open spots that will let the light shine through. But really, just your the basic, easiest way to do this is, um, get these over here. And like I said, you're going to dab most of that paint off. Now, clouds, the farther away a cloud is, especially on the horizon, they're smaller. So your smaller clouds are always toward the horizon. They're toward the bottom. And then as they go up, they get bigger. So, I mean, you can just do some basic basic cloud shapes like so. Um, and then higher up, of course, you're going to have larger clouds. And then the tops of the cloud really is where I start. I start at the top where the light and the sunlight would hit it. And just some basic shapes, you know, that kind of thing. And you're going to have, it's going to be brighter in some spots and, you know, of course, faded in the other. And then I'll take just a dab of gray, and with your gray, you're going to paint the underside of the clouds. You're going to just put some gray up in there, and just kind of blend that with the white. And then, as you can see, then it sort of gives a like a three dimension to that to that cloud. It makes it look gray underneath. Now, another way I've started painting them lately, and um, I did it with an airbrush, and that was you know that's great, but it's something simple. So I just take these. This is just like a, an, an index card, and just tear it. Just tear it in a rough shape, sort of like that-ish, you know, and tear a couple of them like that. So basically what you're creating is, is sort of a, almost a, like a stencil. So like this will be the shape of part of your cloud bank. This will be the shape of part of your cloud bank. And then for those, I like to use these makeup wedges. 
and I buy these at Dollar Tree, buy a pack of 28 for like a dollar, and they're square on the end. So what I do is I tear that square end off to give you a more of a, a, a rougher, different shaped end, and I'm going to dip that in the white, and then I'm going to clean most of it off, and then you'll take this stencil, for lack of a better word, and you're just going to, you can use like painter's tape to hold it on the backdrop if you want. And then along the top, you're going to go in and you are going to, you're going to dab fairly heavy along the top side of that. Okay, so what you're, you're doing right now is you're just creating a cloud top right now. And then you're going to come a little bit, kind of feather it out so it's just a little bit lighter that way. Okay, so when I take this off, now you've got that shape there. Okay, which you could use for a mountain as well. And so I'm going to take another one. And we're going, to, we're going to come here, and then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing with sort of an overlap there. And then we can soften that edge. That's a little bit harder than I wanted it. We can soften that edge a little bit. And so then that is, that's like that. And then in this case, let me re-tear this. It's at a different shape. And you can just basically turn this over, flip it any way you want. And it'll come up with different um, different shapes for the clouds. So we're going to turn it upside down now. We're going to do the, the bottom of these clouds. And again, we're going to go fairly heavy along the edge there. And then lighten it up as we go in. And by uh, by doing that, by having a variety of the way that you, you move the stencil and, and shape it, then you actually get like an overlap on the clouds. So, um, and then we'll come down here. We'll use this one. Uh, yeah, let's use this one. Okay, and then like I said, as we get as you get higher up, the clouds get bigger. So we're gonna just kind of bring this one more over toward this way. Again, heavy toward the top, and then just feather it on toward the bottom. So as you see, you get spots where you can see through the clouds, where the clouds overlap, that sort of thing. And then at this point, we're gonna grab some gray. And then we're going to go back toward the bottom and just, you know, pick spots at random. And we're just going to kind of touch that gray just a little bit toward the bottom of the cloud. Not a lot, just a nice light touch there on the bottom of that cloud. And then you can go in and just sort of freestyle. Add some more gray on the bottom of that cloud. Maybe add some gray up in there. To kind of give that cloud some some uh, <coughs> dimension, and then you can. Um, the nice part of this, you can tear the little bit off the end. You've got a whole new fresh end, and I don't like how sharp those tops are, so I'm going to soften those up a little bit. And I'm just going to go in and just kind of freehand that a little bit, add some highlights. But the main thing is you just you want to try to make the clouds look like they're not just solid uh, to let some light shine through have some lighter spots in the clouds that sort of thing and like i said i've done this with an airbrush before but i i was just kind of messing around and thought i could try it with the makeup brushes and or the makeup sponges and it's not quite as bad and the cleanup is definitely way better if any of you have ever used an airbrush as you know it's like five minutes of painting and two hours of cleaning up <laughs> So yeah, see that's more of a, that's a little bit lighter. So that's that's more like maybe you want to do is get in there and just just barely any paint on that at all. I mean, it, it, it doesn't feel like it, but I mean, you're, you're building that up slowly. And you're just dabbing. Like I said, you're just dabbing. I mean, then you can see how that kind of just is a, a nice lighter cloud. And essentially, just keep practicing, and I mean, it's it's really kind of simple. Uh, and like I said, I try to match my colors with the ground foam that's going to come right up there. And if you use like some clump foliage right up against the edge there, or whatever, I've done the same thing too. And uh, you know, cut out pictures that I use on the backdrop for flats on the building, 
and put those on ahead of time and you can just sort of paint right up to the edge or over the edge of it and uh, that essentially is how I do my backdrops so hopefully this will be helpful to you and uh, thanks for watching.